could we maybe start off with some background on the subject itself? Um, um, seeing that you are yourself, you have a scientific background in, in physics and chemistry, and um, maybe you could go on, uh, tell us a bit about this topic from the scientific um, perspective. Sure. <clears throat> you know, science, um, I guess, is as old as mankind is. And in, in ancient times, science and, and religion kind of got intertwined one with another. And uh, in 1629, Edmund Halley, who was then a well-respected scientist, had the idea that Earth uh, might be hollow. And he, uh, you know, published his ideas and he made drawings and um, got a lot of people to, to consider the possibilities. And religion really didn't have a problem with it because... Um, you know, the scriptures say that the ten tribes escaped into the earth and that they will come forth sometime in the last days. But then science began to mature and to say things that maybe didn't agree with the church. And so science and church kind of went their separate ways. And um, in the 1960s, we had uh, Marshall Gardner, who... Uh, came along and he actually patented the idea of a hollow earth and he was kind of uh, labeled as a, a person who lacked sanity and we also know that in 1926 uh, uh, Admiral Byrd flew across the North Pole at a very low altitude some say around 2,500 feet which is almost impossible uh, in those kinds of visibility conditions you really, really have to be a skilled pilot to be able to do that, but it appears that he did it. And during that flight, he reportedly said that while he was flying along uh, on a course to fly over the pole, he encountered uh, green, lush areas where none should have been. And then uh, this is a quite a long flight, flew all the way back and and made his rendezvous, and then three years later flew over at the South Pole. Didn't have the same report, but uh, it, he nevertheless accomplished both and lived to tell about it. The interesting thing is that, that it kind of backed up Edmund Halley's idea that the planet might be hollow. Now, I was handed a book in 2001 to read about the hollow Earth, I read it, I found it amusing, but um, I didn't put any credence in it at all. Then in 2004, uh, my co-author and I uh, started writing a four-book series called The Ark of Millions of Years. Okay. And um, it, it, uh, it published out and the first book became an Amazon bestseller, which we were very pleased with. The second book, uh, The Subject of a Hollow Earth, came up. And I said, well, I'll do some research of my own and see what I can, I can dig up. And um, started accessing satellite data, seismographical data, oceanographic data, some maritime logs. And I found that there was enough evidence in just that short survey of just a few months to call into question the classic idea that Earth is, you know, a molten ball floating through space and we just live on it, you know, on the surface on tectonic plates. And, uh, you know, there are other universities, that, it turns out, Stanford University has a, a very aggressive department that's looking at planetary core geology, okay. as is MIT, Harvard, and then a paper was published by Washington University, uh, a professor named uh, Dr. Y. Sessions and his grad student team went through 600,000 seismograms and they turned it into kind of a computer model of what the readings said. And from that, they determined that there was another ocean of water underneath the crust. So this is about 2005 and... Um, I said, well, somebody has, has had to have gone up there and actually seen if there's an opening there. 
But as I started to do research, I found that no one had actually done this, but that there was an expedition that was being planned there in 2006, led by Stephen Curry, who was an accomplished um, expedition leader. So you mean in all this time, if I may interrupt you, because this sounds very interesting, it's, it seems like we have journeyed everywhere on this planet, but we have never really actually looked at the tip of uh, our Earth? That's correct. That's correct. And this area that we're talking about going to, up until 2008, was covered in ice year-round. But uh, in 2008, a very large piece, about half the size of the state of Pennsylvania, broke off and floated away. And it opened up this area for the first time to visit by, by sea, by the water. And uh, so it became interesting, very interesting to me. And, you know, just some, some more data has come in from other satellites calling into question the origin of the aurora borealis, which is the aurora over the North Poles, um, some instability in the North Magnetic Pole, which my ancestor, uh, Sir James Ross, discovered in 1831. And it just became a fascinating uh, subject to me. And then when Stephen Curry passed away, I was elected to be the expedition leader, and I have been ever since. So... All we're really trying to do is a very legitimate scientific expedition with as much exposure to the public as we can possibly muster with technology and satellite uplinks to, to see if there is an opening or not. If, you know, that's just it.